All right, looks like we are ready to go. Welcome everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live and the Photography Daily Creative Challenge. My name is Terry White. It's my pleasure to be here once again for day number eight. We're almost there. One more day to go tomorrow, but we have some cool things to do today to talk about with type. So for those of you who are new to this or new to me, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. It is my pleasure to be here uh, showing you tips and tricks on how you can handle your post-production in Photoshop specifically, showing you some of the differences of why you would use Photoshop in, a, in addition to, or maybe in, instead of, depending on what you're trying to do, Lightroom. And more importantly, also giving you some tips just in taking better images along the way to begin with, because of course, the better the image is out of the camera, the less post-production we would have to do. Um, I'm a fan of post-production. I'm a fan of Photoshop. I'm a big fan of Lightroom, all of the above. But uh, sometimes if you can get it as good as you can in the camera, that means you can then just be creative with Photoshop. Now, you might be asking, well, why text? Believe it or not, of the top five or 10 things people do, I would say probably top five things that people do with Photoshop, they add text to images. One of those things that we already covered also is cropping. So cropping and adding text are two of the main reasons people use Photoshop to do something to their images. So with that said, um, let me give some shout outs here. Natalia, Mark, May, uh, Objective Beaver, welcome everybody. Stacy, Voodoo Val's in the house. Angelo, Raphael, uh, Michael, Jeffrey, Ralph, Francisco, of course, Paco, in the house, uh, Rod, Anthony, and uh, if I missed your name, Anna, Marilyn, a lot of people here today. Uh, great to see you all here. Howard Pinsky uh, did a great stream on Adobe XD. I see him still in the chat. So welcome, Howard. If you're going to stick around, that'd be great too. And Jessica, and I'm seeing the names over and over again. Rod, Marie, all that. So welcome, everybody. Uh, we are going to uh, dive right in. And I want to start off with, first, first of all, for those of you who may be new, even though we're on day eight, you still may be new. Uh, so let me show you where you would begin. If you were just coming into this and you say, hey, how do I get caught up? You would head over to behance.net slash daily creative challenge slash photo. And behance.net slash daily creative challenge slash photo. You can click the join the conversation button for future challenges. You would actually be able to register. Uh, this challenge started on May 13th. It's going to end tomorrow. You have till the 26th to get your entries in. Uh, this will walk you through the process of what you do each day. Uh, I had some. I had a person ask me, "Well, hey, I've been sharing my images on Behance, and you haven't really. You know, no one's been giving, been giving me any feedback." And that could very well be the case because if we didn't see it, you know, couldn't give you feedback. But I'm going to show you where you can submit images that you will get feedback on. Uh, so before we get to that, a few of the challenges we've done thus we've done for the past seven days. So lighting, black and white photo, cropping, retouching, photo adjustments, removing distracting elements, combining multiple images together. And we're here today to talk about text. Uh, you can get the photo that I'm going to be working with if you don't have a photo that you want to add text to. And of course, you can watch the videos from the previous sessions. The Discord community, you want to join us on Discord because that's where people are really engaged giving feedback. <laughs> of course, giving feedback, that's funny. Giving feedback on images um, that we've been working on, people adding text already to their images. So if you're saying, hey, I'm not getting any feedback or I don't see where to post, head over to Discord, sign up, it's free. Um, you can do it from just about any device and you want to put your images in the design hat or dash feedback. That's where you will get feedback on your images. All right. I've only got a little bit of time and you know, these things go quick. So let's go ahead and dive into Photoshop. I'm going to switch over and we're always start with a blank page. You can double click and open up your own image from your hard drive. Or if you got it in a library like I do, you can open it from a library. I'm going to open up the one that I gave you to download. It's another shot, another angle of the Eiffel Tower. It opened up a little small on my screen, so I'm gonna hit Command-0 to make it fit screen. PC, that would be Control-0. And before we even add the text to it, let's, give it a let's make it a better image to add text to in the first place. 
So for example, we can go up to, and you've seen me do this before, convert for smart filters to make it non-destructive. Text is already non-destructive, but to make the adjustment we're about to do non-destructive. Filter, camera raw filter, we're just gonna do two things really quick, maybe three. We're gonna hit the auto button for auto tone. That really made a difference right off the bat. Brought in our clouds, brightened up the bottom of the tower, but it actually brightened up the bottom of the tower more than I wanted it. So auto is a good starting point, but it doesn't mean you have to live with it. So I'm gonna bring the shadows back down because I do want that part a little darker so to contrast the text I'm gonna put down there. And uh, last but not least, we're just gonna add a little dehaze to bring the sky out. So that makes the sky really nice and punchy. And of course, we can also use the new texture slider to really bring out the texture of the metal of the, the, the metal in the tower itself. So we click OK, and that'll give us our starting point. You'll notice that that created a layer on the right-hand side. The minute we said that we wanted to make it a uh, convert for smart filters, that made it a layer, that added the smart filters and the camera raw filter that we've um, applied to it. So we can always turn that adjustment back off, see our before and after, or double click to get right back to it. Okay, so now let's get to the text. We're gonna type two words. Of course, you can type whatever you want, but I'm gonna give you an example of two words that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you some, because I know as photographers, you've concentrated on your craft of being good photographers, taking good images. When it comes to text, you're kind of venturing into the realm of graphic design. So design, there are some rules with text. You know, there, you can always break the rules if you know what you're doing, but there are certain rules that just make text look better and don't make people cringe. All right, so we're gonna hopefully follow some of those rules today. So we're gonna grab our type tool, hit the letter T on the keyboard if you can't find it, and um, it will be in whatever font you use last in Photoshop. So this is an Ephra Bold. We're gonna change the font anyway, it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna come down here, I'm just gonna go over to the left edge. Notice I'm on left alignment also, because it will be on whatever you last left it on. And the type color right now, by the way, is white, because that's the last thing I did. And we're gonna go ahead and just simply click, and that will put in some sample text. And in that sample text, I'm gonna type the word France. So I'm just gonna make it all caps. I held down the, the shift key as I typed, put the caps lock on. And there's a way to also type it in upper and lower case, and then, <laughs> yes, papyrus. Someone knew what I was thinking. Comic Sans, exactly. Um, uh, you can uh, type it in upper and lower case and change it to all caps. There are all kinds of ways to do that. But just for the sake of example, I'll do it in all caps for now. Now, notice the cursor still blinking at the end because it doesn't know I'm done. Uh, and I'm not done because I want to make it a little bigger. And here's a quick shortcut while you've still got active type to make it larger. Now, I could hit Command A to select all or Control A on Windows to select all and then change the font size. But there's even a better way. Hold down your command key on Mac, PC control key. That will instantly, while you're holding the key down, give you the transform tool. And then all you have to do is grab a corner and you can just scale the type to be bigger and then let go of the mouse and let go of the command key without ever having to type a point size. So that way you can visually just make it bigger. And also now that we scale things proportionally, you don't have to hold down a shift key either to do it. All right, so I got my word France in there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click um, click OK or uh, click commit, the check mark up here, or you can just click away and that will also auto commit. And then I'm gonna come down to a different spot and I'm gonna type in um, bonjour. This one's gonna be upper and lowercase. Okay, and then I'm gonna, uh, I'm not gonna worry about the size on that just yet. Oh, actually, I will make it a little bigger. Let's make that just a little bigger. And then again, I'll click away. Now, when it comes to type, one of the quick graphic design examples is, or graphic design rules, is you want contrast. If you're gonna have different things like France and Bonjour, you want them to have contrast. And contrast can be any number of things. It can be difference in all caps versus upper and lower case, difference in fonts, sans serif versus serif, bold versus uh, light, uh, italic versus regular. It can be a color versus a different color. Whatever your contrast method is, you make your contrast whatever you want. So in this case, right off the bat, I've got some contrast because there's also a contrast in size. One's bigger than the other. They're not quite lined up. We're gonna fix that, don't worry. 
but just upper and lower case. But I want more contrast than that. I actually want a contrast of fonts. Now, whenever you look at a brochure that's dealing with Paris or France or the Eiffel Tower, for whatever reason, Paris or France just seems to look better in a sand or in a serif font. Right now I'm in a sans serif font where all the edges are smooth. So I wanna switch this to a serif font. And to do that, I can either just double click on the word France that will reselect it, even though it looks like it selected both things. Trust me, it only selected France. Um, and then I can go to my font menu just like I would in any other application and change the font. Let's learn a couple things about the way we do our font menu in Photoshop that will um, help you going forward. So first and foremost, when you pop down a font menu, you can just hover over the type to see it. So I can see some better looking, like that's a better looking France right off the bat. Um, if I, and by the way, it's because I have it on serif already. There we go. Let's go back to all classes. There we go. Now I see it in all the different font. Ooh, I kind of like the grunge look too. That's kind of a cool font. That's called Battery Park. All right, but I'm, I'm seeing all these different fonts and you'll see all your fonts by default. So you'll see the ones that come with the operating system like Apple Emoji. You'll see the ones American Typewriter. You'll see all the ones you have. Well, I'm going to narrow this down to make my choices easier. I'm gonna click the TK for Typekit, which is now Adobe Fonts, and that will narrow it down to just the fonts that I can get from my Creative Cloud subscription, which is great because whatever font I pick from here, you can get too. So if you really wanna practice this to the letter. The next thing I wanna do is I want to narrow it down to just serif fonts. So now I can quickly go through and see which one I like best. But let's say, uh, just for the sake of example, maybe you haven't synced any yet or you don't like any of these, then you can also click the button on the right, add fonts from Typekit, and that will take you to the website. It will show you whatever sample word you've used last. So I'm gonna just go ahead and type the word France. So I, oops, there we go. And I can see everything and I can go ahead and just click Serif and I can also say that I would like a thin version of a serif serif font. So I click that and then it will narrow it down to just the, oh, sorry, not, not skinny. I want thin. There we go. Weight, not width. All right. So I change that to France and now I can see the examples. I can pick the one that I like best. Um, I like Benton Modern Display. That's a cool one. Uh, you can go next, you can go to the next page. You can see just a variety of different fonts that you have access to. And we've also, as of last October, eliminated the number of fonts. You, like we had a limit that we never imposed of 100 fonts. That's gone. You can sync as many as you want. All right. I kind of like Bookmania. But again, this is a personal choice. You choose the one that you like best. Uh, and of course, I can keep going through all the pages. But you get the idea. Uh, find one that you like. I kind of like a lot of these. I like Miller Display. Let me go one more page. See if I like anything better. And they all start to look the same at some point. And then you even start to wonder if the words spell correctly because you just you look at it so so much. Uh, all right, let's let's for the sake of example do freight text. So when I click the activate fonts, what that will do is activate those in this case two fonts. And so now when I switch back over to uh, Photoshop um, and I highlight, double click, highlight the word France, and I come up here and I go down to. I may need to turn off the filter. Hold on for a second. Let's turn that one off. Let's turn that one off. There we go. If everything worked internet wise, my freight would be here. And of course it still has, it takes a few seconds to sync. I had this problem yesterday, didn't I? With text not, or Tuesday with text not syncing uh, in a different demo. Um, all right, I'm not sure why that didn't come up yet, but it will, it should normally just be there but that's okay, That's I just wanted to walk you through the process of how to get the font. And there it is, Freight, Freight Text Pro. So I just wasn't being patient. All right, so it did come in and I have a light version and I have a light italic version. So I want the light version if I wanted that particular font. And then again, to see it, you can click off of it and if that's what you like, away you go. Now, now that I see it big on my document, as what usually happens, I'm not liking it, like that's not the one I want. All right, so let's just quickly change it to a different one. And I'm gonna go back through the process of finding one. I already have some that I like. So I'm just gonna go back to show me all the ones with serifs. 
let me pick the one. Ooh, I like that one. That's kind of one you see often. Uh, what is that? Ambrosia Standard Furman. All right, we're going to use that. And of course, uh, we can pick a different color. So if your color was black or not blending in well, you can go to the color picker and pick whatever color you want. I'm going to use white for now. We'll change that later. Now the next one, I'll click off of it. The next one, I already know what font I want to use. So first and foremost, let's use the move tool. We can pick this layer up, make sure we're on the bonjour layer. We can pick it up, we can move it around and we can line it up. So it lines up to the left of the word France. All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, double click and change it to the font I know I want. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the filter, go back to all classes, and I'm just and I will just say type kit. You can get this font too. It's called Bickham Script Pro Regular. And if you've ever watched any of my streams where I've ever talked about type, nine times out of ten I've used this font as an example, just because it's it's so powerful in the number of things it lets you do. And you're like, what does it let me do? It's a font. All right, I'll show you in a second. So I'm going to do choose Bickham Script. Pro 3 regular, which you can get from Typekit uh, when we're done. Now that made it really small, so I'm going to hold down my command key once again. I'm going to go ahead and scale it up, and, uh, and then I can keep holding down my command key and move it down. And I will actually even overlap it a little bit, and maybe I'll even make it bigger. It doesn't have to be as small as the word France. All right, maybe something like that. Okay, the next thing I want to do while it's still highlighted, I know it's confusing because it looks like France is highlighted too, but it's just so big. That's how big the highlight is. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and change the color. I want a color contrast in addition to a font contrast. So while I'm while it's selected, I'm going to click the the uh, color picker for the type, which is at the, up here at the top. And once I click the color picker, then I can either just go mix a color and it will show it to me. Great. But you know what's the best choice for a color if you don't already know what you want? Use a color that's already there. Use a color that's in the image. So if I move away from this dialog box over back to the image, I get an eyedropper. And I can get that nice beige that's already there in the image. I don't have to figure out what color that is. I don't have to mix it. I don't have to find it. It's already there in the image. If I want a nice blue from the sky, I've got a nice blue from the sky, a nice white from the clouds, a nice beige from the tower. So you can grab a color that's already there to help you with your color choices. All right, and what I found in nature especially, nature gets it right. Like nature, very rarely will you see two colors, you walk out in the field and you're like, oh my God, that's green and some weird color. Nature usually matches colors pretty nicely. So if it's a nature scene, you've already got all the colors that work well together. All right, so now we'll click OK, and we'll click Commit. And now I want to show you some examples. Now we could be done. That looks, I like that. that. That looks pretty cool. But I said this type, this font had some powers, like it has some secret powers. I like showing Bickham script the most because Bickham script of all of our open type fonts, I think it has the most alternate glyphs. What's an alternate glyph? So for example, if I double click and I just highlight the B, all right, so I highlight the B. You'll notice that when I pull down from it, I get this little pop-up dialog. This little pop-up dialog lets me pick the alternate B, capital B. In this case, it's like Jeopardy. How many Bs are there? Two. So there's one that was the default. Then I can click that one and get the new one. Ooh, nice. So let's highlight the letter R. How many R's are there? Ooh, a ton of R's. Yay. So I can pick my favorite look for the R. Now, the ones that have the, um, I forgot what it's called, but the, the, the little swiggly thing to the left, those won't work on the end of the word because it's going to push the R away from the word. But the things that have the squiggly things on the right, those would work great. Um, someone will correct me on what the squiggly things are called. <laughs> I've just forgotten. All right, so if I click that one, ooh, I get the nice squiggly thing on the right. Now I need to make the type a little smaller to make that fit, but then it does that nicely. And look, for example, you can even pick the letter J. You get some new J's. Yay, show me how many J's are on the board. Maybe I like that J better. And you can do all kinds of cool things. Now, keep in mind that if you pick a font and you highlight a character and you get disappointed because nothing's under it, 
don't blame us. This is really the, the, the type designer. So the, the people that make the actual individual faces, they decide how many glyphs are going to be there. Not us. We don't limit them in any way. Swash. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. So a little swash. <laughs> that's a little doohickey. The swash uh, is what I was talking about. So we don't want to swash to the left because that would push the R out. All right. Um, then, and one more rule because it will drive me crazy if you start submitting entries for it. So don't do it on purpose. Uh, one more rule. And this is a rule I'm going to say never, never break. Like I've never seen a good example of this rule that works. Never use a script font in all caps. It will, like you will cause coronary, like heart attacks of designers everywhere if you do that. Never, ever, 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 ever do that. All right, um, uh, Jan's saying, I find kerning to be challenging. So I wasn't gonna talk about kerning today, but I can. Uh, let me move the word France up because we usually don't kern scripts because they're usually already kerned enough. Well, kerning is the space between characters. So uh, really quickly, if I wanted the C to be a little closer to the end because the rest of these are touching, but maybe the other ones aren't, double click, put your cursor between them, and then hold down your Option or Alt key to left arrow or right arrow. So it's like, I don't want to put a full space between two letters and I don't want less than a space. So kerning with your option or alt, left or right arrow, will really let you fine tune the characters. Now for the most part, they do a good job on their own, of, of like the styles are being kerned properly. But the problem with kerning is that, especially if the font, if you make something really big, it was designed at 12 points. So when you make it 100 point, the kerning may fall apart because it really was never designed to be that big. All right, today I saw Comic Sans. Yeah, don't use Comic Sans. Um, Comic Sans has, has just got a bad name and design. All right, so so anyway, we're <laughs> I'm out of time. I should be talking about exporting right now. So really quickly, as we've been doing in the past, we're going to do file. Um, we're going to do uh, export, save for web legacy. So this is a tall image. There is a restriction. Uh, we want to do JPEG, high. We want to go ahead and say that the width needs to be at least 808 characters. So I'll just make it 810. Um, and then we're going to save this out. Uh, we'll save it to the desktop. And then we would head back over to Behance. Head back over to Behance, create a project. And then we would add it. That'll upload it. We'll hit continue. That'll give us a way to create a nice, um, a nice poster for it. Day eight, adding text. Uh, daily creative challenge, of course, but day eight, adding checks. So uh, fills, we wanna make sure it's photography. Tools used, Photoshop. And most importantly, discoverability, because I am still looking at these. PS, daily challenge in the keywords. All right, so publish, publishing the project. And um, you can share it if you want, but there's your work. And here's some of the, again, these are the ones I found on Behance that I really like that have the daily, PS, daily creative challenge, or daily challenge in the, um, in the in the keywords I'm, I'm trying to read a comment and say something at the same time it usually doesn't work so some of my favorites thus far i really really like this one by the way whoever did this uh, i could probably look at the name uh keru yamada i really like this because this was the before and this was really showing a great example of compositing i'm, I'm sorry not composite composition compositing this image to make it look much better so it's a much stronger image than it was originally all right, so with that said, um, hopefully you got something out of today. I can't wait to see what text you add to your images, what text you add to my images, uh, what font you use, what contrast you use, what colors you use, uh, what sizes you use, except for Comic Sans and Papyrus. Except for those, I can't wait to see what you do. All right, so with that said, cheers everybody, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. And I'm out.